RGB is everywhere, as you likely already know. But recently, we've started to see an influx of a different kind of RGB implementation flood the market, the more advanced ARGB, with the A standing for addressable. What does this mean, what's the difference, and what happens if you confuse the two? Ready to dive into custom water cooling but unclear about what parts you might need? Check out Thermaltake's new M360 Plus RGB kit. Featuring a D5 pump res combo, 16mm hard tube, Pacific C Pro fittings, and the best RGB implementation on the market, the M360 Plus fits all mainstream Intel and AMD sockets and is fully expandable as your system evolves. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. In the beginning, there was cold cathode lighting, and it was kind of good. In the middle, there were single color LEDs, and they were pretty good. A little later, we got ways to control the color and patterns of our LED lighting, and it too was good. Now, technology has gone too far. We can not only control the color of our LED strips as a whole, but we can talk to individual LEDs on that strip and get them to do all kinds of wacky things. This has led to a minor amount of confusion amongst consumers because these technologies are unfortunately not backwards compatible. But why aren't they? What makes these two types of products so different? To start off, let's take a look at a traditional RGB header and lighting ecosystem. For a couple of years now, motherboard vendors have been including RGB headers on their motherboards. These are 12 volt headers and the vast majority of them have four pins. There's a ground pin and then individual pins for each of the letters R, G, and B. So there's a red pin, a green pin, and a blue pin. Each pin receives a specific amount of power, illuminating that color a certain amount. When you mix and match the amount of power each color is getting, you can adjust what the final result is from the LEDs overall. And each color has 255 different power states that it can be in. As an easy to understand example, say you wanted your LED to light up red and only red. The RGB color code would read 255 for red, zero for green, and zero for blue. Similarly, if you wanted purple, the code is 128 red, zero green, and 128 blue. Because each of the three colors has 255 different states, simple math tells us that 255 cubed equals about 16 million, or the number of colors available that is often touted by RGB devices. Now, in reality, can you see 16 million colors? No, of course not. But technically, 100 red, 100 green, and 100 blue is a different shade than 99 red, 100 green, and 100 blue. This is why if you connect one of these plugs backwards, the lights that you're trying to control will still light up, but will be the wrong color. The wrong color signals are going to the wrong channels. This is also why these types of RGB devices can only show one color at a time. The same signal goes to all of the LEDs connected to the header. So when you add on addressable to that RGB moniker, what exactly happens? Well, in addition to having to now say ARGB instead of just RGB, we actually end up with a completely different system. ARGB headers have three pins instead of four. And when you think about it initially, this may not make very much sense. After all, ARGB devices are more advanced and have more functionality, right? Why would the header be simplified? Well, it's because these headers do not talk to the individual color channels. Instead, you have a pin for ground, a pin for power, and a pin for signal. The signal pin actually can talk to tiny, tiny controllers attached to each LED on the strip or on the fan. So instead of the overall signal being limited to red, green, and blue channels for the entire run, the signal can now make stops at each LED and tell it to do something different. ARGB kind of sounds like the bee's knees, right? After all, you can't actually plug it in backwards because of the pin pattern, and it gives you way more functionality and options. Just take a look at that fan over there. But there are some limitations. ARGB devices run on five volts of power versus 12 volts on your standard RGB strip. 
That means that they have a limitation on how many devices you can daisy chain together. If you're talking about running, uh, say, a 10-foot strip around your desk, you might need to actually have a second power source halfway down the line, or else the LEDs at the end of the strip might not even light up at all. Take a setup like this, for instance, with photos provided by Keith of WCCF Tech of his new desk setup. This just wouldn't work on five volts of power at one end only. Whereas the way it's set up now with a standard 12 volt RGB strip, it works just fine. This isn't usually a limiting factor inside of your PC as you don't generally use anything longer than maybe a 60 centimeter lighting strip. But for people who have seven fans run off of RGB splitters attached to one header on the motherboard, this might be a problem. That's why a lot of ARGB ecosystems need something like this, a controller box. Unfortunately, something else to have to hide away inside your case. So I've mentioned a few times now the power requirements of standard versus addressable RGBs. But can you run a standard strip off of an addressable header? And vice versa. After all, this ASUS X470i motherboard has both of them side by side. And it would be great if we could use them both. So let's demonstrate what happens when we try out mixing our different RGB peripherals. So for now, we've got everything plugged in, running fine, but we're gonna mess with that. So let's see what happens when we take our regular RGB strip and we take our regular RGB fan and we plug it into the addressable header on the motherboard. So let's unplug this. And what I, I actually have both of these connected to a splitter. So I'm just gonna unplug the splitter and plug it into the addressable header. Don't explode, don't explode, don't ex All right, didn't explode. So it looks like what's happening, uh, I guess we only got lights on the fan. It looks like what's happening is that because the one of the three pins coming off of the addressable header actually is power. Remember, there's power, signal, and ground. Whatever RGB channel is being is receiving that power signal on the RGB device is what's going to light up. So in this case, I guess that's a I guess it's a red. It looks like a pink, but I guess it's red. But unfortunately, because that header is only 12 volts, we're not going to get power to everything that we plugged in. There's just not enough juice there. And I bet I bet if we flip this around, we're going to get a different color. Is that a blue? Did we get a blue? We got a blue. So yeah, the, the power signal that's coming off of that header is gonna hit one of those three red, green, or blue channels, and as a result, you get one color out of the fan. Doesn't look like that anything is broken or working incorrectly. However, like I said, we don't have power for both our strip and our fan. I think things might go a little bit differently, however, if we attempt to plug our addressable fan into the regular header and I'm hoping we don't blow some things up, although it's certainly possible. And if we do, Cool the Master, I'm sorry, I ruined one of your fans. So because of the way the end of the plug on the ARGB fan works, uh, one of the plugs is actually stopped up. You can't plug a regular four pin RGB header into it. What I've had to do is use our same splitter, put a three pin adapter on the end, and then we're gonna mate the two and hopefully see what happens and what happens hopefully is not a fire so everybody cross your fingers mm, boom nothing so the reason that there is nothing is because a there's 12 volts running through that as opposed to the normal five which this is rated for and additionally there's no signal remember the argb fans run on power ground signal not necessarily power to each lighting channel. So there's nothing telling this fan to light up. All it sees is a burst of 12 volts versus uh, an actual signal saying, hey, light up magenta or something like that. And I wonder if we've fried this beyond the point that it will work again. It's possible that we have. Yeah. Yep. So we burn the lights out. Uh, by plugging it into 12 volts. But as you can see, the fan still spins because that's just running off of the PWM signal. So we've probably roasted those LEDs in there or the controllers for those LEDs. So it's not gonna light up again. However, if you happen to do this, I 
guess you can still use it as a fan. Uh, so that's kind of good news, but yeah, don't cross these signals, these addressable RGB LEDs, whether it be in strip form or in fan form, not big fans of receiving 12 volts. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is that you need to decide which route you want to take. Standard four pin RGB devices are right now much more plentiful and usually cheaper as well. If you goof and reverse the plug, nothing happens except you get some odd looking colors. You can also technically make longer daisy chain runs of lighting coming out of just one header, meaning that you can have your desk lighting synced up with your PC lighting without the use of an external controller box. On the other hand, addressable RGB fans and strips are starting to show up more and more, and they offer truer whites, more vibrant colors, and more fun options for patterns and whatnot. They will likely cost you a bit more, however. As an example, these Cooler Master fans will run you about $25 each versus the standard versions with the regular RGB implementation, which are only about 18. You will also need some way to control them. So either an external box or an ARGB header, which although becoming more available are still pretty rare. So which RGB components do you prefer? Standard like this and like this fan or the new addressable version? Let me know down below in the comments. Also don't forget that you can support BPS Customs directly by subscribing to the channel if you found this video useful or informative, or even checking out the merchandise store linked in the description. As always guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.